Welcome to the Mountain Guides. They operate five mountain guiding companies in the American West. The Mountain Guides of Utah, the Mountain Guides of Red Rock, the Mountain Guides of Montana, the Mountain Guides of Colorado. Their flagship operation in Jackson Hole is based in Jackson and leading trips all over the high peaks of the Rocky Mountains. Join their custom mountain adventures led by experienced guides in the iconic destinations. For more information, log on to themountainguides.com. Welcome to O'Connor's Kitchen and today I'm going to teach you how to make Thai dumplings and I know that dumplings are made in lots of different cultures but this is an Asian dumpling and it really is an important part of our family history. My four kids, Amos, Ramsey, Zachary and Gus, when they hear that I'm making dumplings just kind of they'll stop everything and make sure that they get their share because it's just one of those things that I think everybody can have a twist on and I just want to show you ours. Uh, but make sure that you, you make enough because I, when I think back to how many I've actually made in my life, I was counting today in the car on the way here and I kid you not, it's something like 40,000 <laughs> over the last you know, 30 or so years. So here we go. We start with um, about a pound of ground pork. Now I know that everyone doesn't eat pork, so you can also use ground chicken, ground turkey, shrimp, um, so don't feel like you can, can't make dumplings if you don't want to use pork. So I have a pound of ground pork, and then I'm going to add in some chopped red pepper, some chopped cabbage, about a cup cup of each. It kind of depends. I'm gonna, when I mix this up, I'll decide if I have enough of these vegetables. Some chopped green onion, fresh ginger, some minced, a couple tablespoons of each fresh garlic, and then we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna do about two tablespoons of this very nicely minced cilantro. And okay, so that's that part of it. Now for the kind of the wet ingredients, I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of soy. And if you're gluten-free, they do sell gluten-free soy. So one, two. Then I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of sesame oil. And just for a little bit of salt, I'm gonna add some fish sauce. These again are all very Asian kind of spices. Now this, the main ingredient that I like to add is hoisin, which is um, kind of a thick uh, sugary paste that's made with soybeans. So I'm gonna add in probably a tablespoon of that. It's slightly sweet, so we're gonna do that. And I also like a little spice, so I'm gonna put in a little garlic chili paste, like maybe a couple teaspoons. All right, now that's just ready to mix. Um, I'm actually gonna do this with my hands and I have washed my hands, so just easier to get all those ingredients mushed in together. Um, I do like to add in some ground shrimp if I happen to have it, because that gives it even another layer of flavor. But just the plain pork is fine. And you can just smell all those yummy ingredients, the, the hoisin and the fish sauce and the soy and the sesame. Um, and I like to use red cabbage because it's kind of prettier once you get it in the dumpling. And there are lots of ways to um, put dumplings into a wrapper and I'm just going to show you the way that we do it. Okay. Okay, so there's the, the dumpling insides, innards. Then I'm gonna take these wonton wrappers, which you can buy in the grocery store, already cut in the shape of a dumpling. 
and I'm gonna lay out the dumpling wrapper so that I can fill them. I'm gonna lay, start with about 12. You've gotta be careful because these kind of dry out if you leave them in the open air. So either cover them with a towel or just do a few at a time. Now 12 is not even gonna begin to feed my kids. So, but I'm only gonna make 12 today because we don't have time to make 100. Okay, so then we're gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of this batter, which is really nicely seasoned with the ginger and the garlic, like that. And I'm just gonna go down the line here, the dumpling line, dumpling train, wishing that I had somebody helping me, but whatever. I've made so many of these, I can barely, yeah, I can barely count. Um, there you go. This inside, again, I always like to talk to people about what they can have in the freezer because you could have this, the dump, the inside of the dumpling in the freezer, ready to go. You can also freeze the dumpling once I put it together before you fry it up. So that's kind of a, then you could just steam it later. But I've made these for weddings and I'm gonna show you a yummy dipping sauce. So, okay, there we have the dumpling wrappers or fills. Now I'm gonna take the corners, just kind of squish them together. And make a little flower looking thing. And it takes a little, a little bit to kind of figure out how to do it. It's kind of a good way of calming down and slowing down and just focusing on what you're doing because it can be frustrating when you first start. But I think of it as kind of a contemplative thing to do in the kitchen. Um, I love doing things with my hands. So, and they're pretty like this. You can, there are other ways of folding dumplings. Like you can also, of course you've seen the kind that you just roll over like that and then tighten the sides on the edges. So that's another way of doing it. I like the squishing method because you can make them faster. So as you can see, you just have to kind of squeeze the bottom part. That's kind of a trick. You want the, the meat and the vegetables to be showing because they're gonna steam nicely like that. And then sometimes they stick together so they're very thin. That's what makes them delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna show you just two different kinds. Sometimes, some of my kids like them cooked better this way because they have more of a kind of a crunchy outside. All right, so now that they're, they're ready to, to fry and steam, so we're gonna move over to the stove. Okay, now it's time to fry the dumplings up. And this is kind of a stinky process, so make sure you got your fan on. So I've put a little uh, sesame oil and vegetable oil in the pan, and I'm gonna set my dumplings in and turn it to high heat, high, high heat, because you want these to cook fast. Basically the idea is that you want to brown them on the bottom and you'll start seeing them. I'll show you how they kind of brown around the edges. And then we're going to add some chicken broth to steam them. So high heat, I'm going to put a top right on it because they're going to sizzle. And yeah, just be careful. You don't want to get burned. Oh boy, I can smell the dumplings for sure. Come and take a look. They're sizzling right in the pan and you can see that they're starting to slightly brown around the edges, which is exactly what you want. So you really wanna do this the whole time on a high heat. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some of your chicken broth and I'm gonna wait just another little minute here. Then you're gonna pour in just a little bit. Actually have your, the top ready because you don't wanna get sizzled. Okay, you can hear that. And then I'm just gonna let them steam for a few more minutes. Keep, I might add a little more broth. I just have to kind of check them and see how they're doing. 
This will take probably another three to five minutes because you want to cook that meat through. It could be actually all vegetables, so if you couldn't eat any of the meats. I'm gonna check. You can see how they're starting to, the meat's starting to um, cook. And I'm gonna pour a little bit more broth on the top. Dumplings, here they come. Oh my gosh. Where are M Ramsey, Zach, Amos, and Gus? Look at these beautiful things. Okay. So they're ready to eat, and while they're cooling, I'm also going to show you how to make a really yummy dipping sauce. There you go. So they, they steam up like little flowers after you put the chicken broth in and just put your cover back on. Um, and these are fine at room temperature, so you don't have to worry about eating them hot out of the pan. In fact, you can't really eat them hot out of the pan. Um, okay, and I like to sprinkle, like my sprinkles, here's some more for a cocky. This makes it pretty. Okay, the dipping sauce, simple. It's basically soy sauce. So maybe in terms of the, so I would say one third soy and third rice wine vinegar. And then lime, lime juice. I actually think a lot of lime juice is good. Then a little bit of chili paste, spice, some fresh cilantro, and then you can just, this cilantro is so pretty, I'm just gonna sprinkle it all over the dumplings. So maybe some green onion in there, cause you can't go wrong with a little onion. Now I'm gonna taste that with my finger. Mm. The sweetness of the, this is sweetened rice wine vinegar. There's a different, sometimes it comes plain, so a little sugar in it is good. So there we have our dumplings, and I'm also going to make on this a, um, a buckwheat soba noodle salad to eat with the dumplings. And buckwheat noodles are great if you're gluten free. You can buy gluten free buckwheat noodles. And to go with that, I made um, a peanut sauce with peanut butter and soy and um, a little hoisin, garlic, ginger. So I'm gonna pour that on the noodles, which have already been cooked and are cooled. So this is a great vegetarian idea for, for people. And it's also the kind of thing that would be great on a picnic because the more it kind of sits in the, um, in the noodles and the sauce together, the more flavor comes out. And I have just some shredded carrots, cucumbers, red pepper. I'm just gonna mix that in. And it's not fussy, so it could just sit in your fridge. I'm gonna put some more cilantro in there. And then I'm gonna just do a little mix. Add some more onion. More cilantro, because it's already cut, and cilantro is a good fresh spice. Um, it would be great to get a fork, but I'm going to use this spoon instead to really mix it in. I'm going to taste it because it might actually need a little lime juice. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to put a little lime juice in. Mm. There you go. Soba peanut noodle salad with fresh vegetables and Thai dumplings. 
Okay, thank you for joining me today at O'Connor's Kitchen. I was really excited to share an old family recipe for Thai dumplings with pork and vegetables and the dipping sauce. And then we have some soba noodles with a peanut sauce and lots of fresh veggies. I'm just gonna scoop some of that up. That's really good cold, be great on a picnic. You know, just take that in your cooler. And then, of course, we're not gonna forget dessert. And I made a peach cobbler crisp. You know, peaches are always delicious, but especially in the late summer months. This is a really easy recipe that you can find um, on my website if you order my cookbook. Uh, it's one, of, and it's it's easier than a pie because you basically just put the butter in the bottom. You put the peaches that have been soaking in sugar, and then you pour a batter on top. So it's kind of cakey, cobblery. So I'm just gonna. It just came out of the oven. It's super hot. It might be a little sloopy because the. It seems like everybody in this studio is just so impatient for dessert that I had to take it out a little bit early, but if you let it sit for a while, it would be, you know, a little bit more cakey. But we're gonna just like take a little scoop of that. It's so yummy. Look at that. Peaches. And then a little, of course, if we had some ice cream on the side, that would be delicious. But it really just highlights the sweet peaches. And we didn't make samurai bread on this episode, but that's because Asian food maybe doesn't necessarily go. But don't forget to go to my website and order your samurai bread kit because it's um, easy to make. You get two mixes with each order and a, a bread pan that's handmade in Vermont and you just add water. You can make this bread, as one of my friends said, um, at her lunch break. <laughs> she made it in between meetings. So um, please check it out. Uh, and let me know how it goes for you because I always like getting feedback and order my cookbook go to my website O'Connor's Kitchen thank you for joining me and I can't wait to see you next time Welcome to the Mountain Guides. They operate five mountain guiding companies in the American West. The Mountain Guides of Utah, the Mountain Guides of Red Rock, the Mountain Guides of Montana, the Mountain Guides of Colorado. Their flagship operation in Jackson Hole is based in Jackson and leading trips all over the high peaks of the Rocky Mountains. Join their custom mountain adventures led by experienced guides in the iconic destinations. For more information, Log on to themountainguides.com.